Hey Rangers, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about Zenkanja episode 3. So if you want to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. We're going to jump into it. If you subscribe, it, I would greatly appreciate it and it helps the channel grow and that's what we want right now. We open up and find that Jurin is a really good cook and I love the fact that all his food, <laughs> like the meat and stuff or whatever's inside it, is pretty much just gear based look and i kind of like the that they're keeping this in because Majin later on when she cries she cries gears and i generally kind of thought that's kind of really interesting that it, this is a, a trope that we're going to get all the way through so this entire episode is mainly um that the whole area or part of japan has been completely frozen which isn't a bad thing in this it just feels like everything's done in a green screen and obviously we know why but when you kind of see everyone slipping about everyone kind of being silly it kind of brings this episode down quite a bit which i don't mind it being this early but i hope this isn't kind of like a trope that we see constantly and i know it's a kid show but sentai has always been kind of a little bit more serious at times so seeing this wasn't too bad but i'm hoping that they get rid of it like very very quickly uh, on in the show we meet Majin, um who is the female of the little group and i really love her costume design i think it is amazing it feels I don't know, it feels very cute and that you know for a while that they are going to use this um, over and over again, which I don't really mind. Sorry about that, I had to change angles. Everything was looking a little bit dark, but let's continue the review. As the Zenkaijas are all going out to fight, they instantly find Majin after quite a while. It's, it's kind of like a really weird way that they meet her. Like she's kind of hiding away or something and she, uh, and the others kind of like slip by, they, they hit everything and that they actually kind of like meet her. Uh, it looks like her and Durin have actually met. It looks like maybe from what we've seen in this episode that she was in love with him or that she really cares for him. Um, we see it kind of later on when they're kind of having a flashback where you see her as a young girl and she's kind of grown up and it looks like she's got a massive crush on him. She does the thing that, you know, when you're younger, you pull the... Uh, the flower petals off like you know does he love me yes no he doesn't yes he does and i think it kind of falls to the fact that she does really kind of like him and she's kind of reconnected with him over the years much later on this is why we see her crying and gears just pouring out of her face for most of this thing they they go around and they do this whole like crystal ball thing because obviously she's into magic so it's mainly like she get they go to different areas uh which is kind of strange and you know she's i'm guessing it's when she turns around and says like oh you know we need to go to these locations they have certain properties etc etc they go to a haunted house they go to saunas and i just kind of think that every single time that i see them in hot weather or something like that that they go really kind of like would they survive wouldn't they kind of overheat and shut down because like the sauna thing was really weird like they're just there relaxing kaito's like yeah i'm, I'm fine with this and yet with the others it's more like nope we're overheating we've got to get out there and again the magical house and i love gaio with this like all the guy on like the others run away and he's like hey girl because this girl just pops out of nowhere who's like a japanese ghost and it's like hey girl how you doing and i kind of really got like brock and misty like you know that's sort of like mainly brock from pokemon type vibes now from what i kind of presume in this is that guy on then starts taking the piss and says like magic doesn't exist and this sends uh Majin like completely crazy and she has a go at him and you know she's like saying like magic exists and stuff like that that's what i'm kind of guessing and she just goes crazy on him when he's like oh sorry i kind of didn't know about that one oopsie and this therefore we get the whole general thing of her like real uh, like talking about her past exactly what's been going on i just love the fact that how they get everywhere is they go on sleds so then when Majin joins up with the zenkangers later on because the bad guys have come down they're, they're about to fight and stuff um i love the fact that she, you know she looks into the crystal ball she like keeps going like magi 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 and then all of a sudden she sees like a 
like a jet, like a sparkle, like a pink sparkle. And then the way that she enters, it just comes on, just on a, on a sledge. I generally thought, what the actual hell? And I, it, it made me laugh because it's that sort of tone where she just like comes in normally like stops and then carries on and it's just little subtle pieces of humor like this that i absolutely love more than anything and it makes me laugh more like i love this now the one thing that did really get me which i was so kind of hoping that they continue on they kind of do but when she gets the the uh, gatlinga um and she pushes the button it fires a shot but I really wanted it to go to the bad guys and kind of like keep going. She goes like, uh huh, no, no, and shoots it. And then it carries on, but it doesn't. So she just shoots off randomly. And I'm like, I'm glad that they left it on. Um, they teach her how to morph, what to do. And the other bad guys like, huh, what, what, what what's going on? And it, it just, I think that kind of made me laugh quite a bit. We get a fight and it happens normally. And the, uh, uh, because they're all, it's ice everywhere, they can't really fight properly. They keep sliding about and they land on this like the kind of the lake or the ocean type thing, the, the vast body of water that they've got. And they can't really fight properly. So they use the Torcuja, um gear and they put it in and they gain the ability of doing the, the kind of like the choo-choo type thing, the train ability, which allows them to completely like, destroy all the, the kind of minions. And then um, Majin, she actually casts a spell on their feet. So it's like ice, uh, so they can walk properly. Uh, like ice boots and stuff like that. So they've got little like pink like oh, uh, spikes on the bottom of their shoe, which helps them able to completely fight. And that, I think, is kind of really cool. It just it adds a little bit more to it. And you kind of think that they would have done this a little bit later or kind of thought, well, if we're on ice, then we need to kind of like have a way to combat them. Obviously the same thing, they've defeated the monster, which I'm guessing is Ice World, because obviously we had Mushroom World originally. So there's a massive big fight going on. Um, you've got Gaia, uh, uh, Gaian and you've got Juran, they transform into giant forms. They combine and they still have the, um, oh, what is it? it? It's like the baseball type element where they're about to combine together. And then obviously Majin turns into a dragon. She combines and she does the same thing. And we get kind of a switch between them. Now, because I think that obviously Juran and Majin has a, uh, a, you know, a pass together, they work together really, really well. And thus therefore able to kind of take down this monster. Then obviously then they swap to um, Juran and Gal Lion, and then they combine and they do the kind of finisher. Now, one thing is I completely forgot to mention this one. And I kind of like the fact that they've taken inspiration from Power Rangers. So then when we've seen finishers, like they get the weapons, they power them up and they use them. We can see that this has happened in Sentai and it they've kind of like given a nod to Power Rangers. Now, for some strange reason, um, when Majin uses her fire blast and stuff like that, it turns the ice monster into a kind of shaved ice type of treat. So before he's defeated, she eats the shaved ice treat and then they kind of attack and destroy the monster. And that that's pretty much it. One thing is we get now is with Vroon, at the very end, he's kind of sweeping up, but he notices that the gears, when the bad guys break their uh, the, the gears and stuff like that, um, like something leaves. And I kind of run it throughout prediction right now. I think that this is leading to something bigger at the very end. Like the elements are leaving the gears and then they will hit something major at the end. And they will, it will be something so big that it will be like the main big bad or it'll be like, ha ha ha, you think wrong. And then they drain the powers and stuff. So to kind of finalize, uh, Majin is at the very end. Uh, they're all kind of like celebrating and partying and they look into the crystal ball one more time and they see that they've got the glasses of run. And I think that that's gonna be the last one. Like, hey, you need to come look at this. You know, he's gonna be the next one. So yeah, I kind of really wanna leave it there. Now this episode I think is actually really good. I feel like it's a bit silly most of the time, which I'm not particularly a big fan of, especially with the kind of like the oopsies and ah oh, falling over. I feel like it was done to, to kind of death and I, I, I generally really wanted it to end. But the fight scenes were not too bad. I wish they used another gear, but it looks like they're using maybe one or two gears per episode. The Megazord fights or the like the mecha fights were actually really, really good and I actually generally really liked them. I love the fact that now 
if some people are, uh, are more compatible, they fight better or they combine better. Um, so I kind of like that. I think it was a really kind of nice touch to it. So I'm going to leave it there. What are your thoughts on this? Do you like Zenkanger so far? Are you loving it? Are you hating it? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you like this sort of content and you want to see more, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. And also, if you like this sort of angle, let me know and I'll probably do more videos like this. I kind of like it, actually. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. ありがとうございます。チャンネル登録、高評価お願いします。